We're back. <laughs> What's up? Let's talk about it. Pro. What's going on, you man? You shoot a documentary. That's why you're in town. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Good talk. Um, so give me an update on your portfolio. Are you still a millionaire? Yeah. Let's see if I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the last time you came to the house and you were like, no, I'm still a millionaire. And it changed from 999000 to a yes. million on camera, which on wasn't camera. planned. On camera, yes. 962000 But wait. Wait, wait. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> but wait, there's more, there's more. That's just Robin Hood. You're out of the millionaire club. But wait, but wait, look. Oh, never mind. 74,000 Dogecoin in my Coinbase. You're back in. What's up, guys? The millionaire is back. There's this new kid on the block, Shiba Inu. <sighs> I've looked at it, I understand. There's a lot of loyal people following it. First, I just wanna hear your perspective about it. What do you think of the coin? I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I despise Shiba Inu coin. And I'm gonna tell you why. You wanna know why? Please tell me. They basically created this coin from its inception to kill Dogecoin. I'm not making this up. If you check the website, you check, you know, the description of it, it's labeled the Dogecoin killer, right? And its whole point was to take out Dogecoin. So whenever Elon Musk tweets about a Shiba Inu, or I'm getting a new dog, and he says Shiba Inu, Shiba Inu is actually the dog breed of Doge. So he's talking about Dogecoin. But when he says that, just the mere fact that he says Shiba Inu, Shiba Inu Kun shoots up, right? And so it confuses people thinking, oh, he's talking about this new Shiba Inu coin, when in reality he's talking about Doge. Why did I read comments of people saying, you're wrong, it's not why Shiba is pumping. Why is it really going up? Because a lot of people are disputing this and saying that's not the reason why, it's not because of Elon. What are they talking about? <sighs> it's just riding off the Doge wave. Whether you look at it, whether it's the Elon tweet or whatever you wanna say, the fact that it, the dog breed Shiba Inu was created as a coin and labeled the Dogecoin killer. These guys are after all of the influence Doge has had, all of the audience, all of the holders, all of the people interested in Doge. They're taking shine away from Doge. People that could be invested in Doge are now invested in Shiba Inu because they feel like they missed out. In reality, you didn't miss out. So, you know, it's funny because all of these arguments that Pro is getting into with Shiba Inu are the same exact arguments that you could apply to literally any other crypto today and say, well, you know, I missed out on Bitcoin and Ethereum, that's just too high, so I'm gonna invest in Dogecoin. Oh, I missed out on Dogecoin, I'm gonna invest in this new thing. So do you think that people are just going from one thing to the next to feel like they're in early enough? If they're in it just to make a quick buck, a quick flip, I, I can understand that, right? So a lot of people, I see them saying this, like, oh, I missed out on Doge, so that's why I'm getting Shiba, right? But it's essentially, I, I like to call it a poo-poo dookie coin. <laughs> and, and, and people just buy into it, wait for the moonshot and sell out of it. They don't really believe in it. It's not an investment. Nobody who I've talked to that has bought Shiba Inu coin plans to hold it for two to five years. They literally buy it, hope it goes up, sells it and gets the hell out of there. You know what I mean? Like that's really how they look at it. And, that, and, and, I, and I've come to terms with that. I've even said, look, if this is your means of making money, if this is how you feel like you can do a quick flip and change your life or your family's life, do whatever you feel is best. But don't look at it as an investment. But don't you think that's the exact same argument that I was making when I was like, no, you should, it's great that you made $3 million with Dogecoin mm -hmm. and I pleaded with you to please sell and invest yeah. it into other assets and diversify, maybe yeah. put some of it into Bitcoin. And it's the exact same story that I feel like has echoed again and again with crypto. And now it just so happens to be with this new Dogecoin <laughs> variation, which I find hilarious. And so it's funny because I find myself in this room in front of this camera talking to, I don't know who's watching this, and I don't know my place because I've made so many crypto videos covering these smaller coins mm -hmm. and I've tried to approach it in a way that's not dismissive because if I'm dismissive and I tell people, hey, listen, this is scary, it's mm -hmm. a little bit dangerous, before you consider this one that's so scary, mm -hmm. maybe invest in these 10 other things like dividend stocks and index funds and boring. Bitcoin and Ethereum, <laughs> boring, right? But, but maybe consider those five first before you get into this really scary one. 
And it's funny because what I found is that if you have nothing good to say, if you're only here to warn people about whatever, they don't hear that. Yeah. It's the equivalent of standing between a bear and his meal. And if you stand in the way of that, you just get mauled. And it's funny, and I understand because I don't want to be that person that tells people not to invest. But then it gets deeper. Because if I discourage someone from investing, the price could go up to 100x. And they missed out. And they missed because out because they watched my silly video cautioning them against mm -hmm. it. Which is really interesting because I made a video about SafeMoon a few months ago. You did. And people from the SafeMoon army destroyed that video. They thought I was crazy, I didn't support them. And all I said in that video was just, please be careful and here's how it works and people just dismissed the video. Yeah. And now, just recently, I'm getting comments from people saying, oh my gosh, you were right. Yeah. This video aged really well because yeah. it lost so much value. So much. And so people are saying now that I was right. But it's funny because now I look back in this video and I'm like, but I wasn't right. Because when you invest in something, you don't invest necessarily because of the price. Yes. And the best example of this is Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. When you bought into Bitcoin, when I bought Bitcoin, it was whatever it was, a couple hundred dollars way back in 2014. It went up to $20,000 in 2017. I still held on, mm -hmm. but then it crashed. And people said, oh, you're an idiot for buying it. You were wrong. Who paper handed? N I didn't sell, <laughs> right? No, you sold that 600. Well, I didn't sell at 600. I bought a drone for six Bitcoins. That was like a $300,000 mistake, but okay. that's a separate thing. <laughs> But still, the fact that I held on and people were saying that I was wrong because it crashed mm -hmm. is a very bad reason to look at why you're investing. If price indicator is the only thing people look at, they miss out on the bigger picture That's of true. what is. That's true. Let me just say this. People to this day, even recently, hit me up, comment in my comment section, Pro, you should have sold at three million. That was it. That was the all-time high. Dogecoin is never getting to three million. Like for you to get three million again is never gonna happen, right? And what I tell them is, I believe in Dogecoin like I believe in Bitcoin, right? And you can look at all of Bitcoin's all-time highs over the years and had the exact same argument, right? Bitcoin got to $20,000, dropped all the way down to $3,000. You're an idiot. You should have sold at twenty thousand. Now it's at fifty thousand, fifty-five thousand dollars. Who's the idiot? Do you see what I'm saying? It, be, it depends on the time frame of when you're making that remark and where the crypto space is at. Exactly. It depends on the timeline you pick. So even with this Safe Moon video, even though I could take the high ground and say, "Well, I was so right," I don't necessarily think I was right. I still believe that cautioning people yeah. is. I guess one of my responsibilities here on YouTube, having the influence that I might with my videos. And so all I want to tell people is just, hey, great, go do this thing, but maybe consider this first and just be careful. And if you use price indicator as the reason why you invest in something, nice. and the reason why you believe your investment fails is why most people lose money is True. because they just exit prematurely thinking, well, I guess that was a scam. Then again, if you're a true believer, playing the devil's advocate, if you're a true believer in Safe Moon, Safe Moon Army, you guys are gonna take this all the way to the or moon. Or Shiba Inu. Or Shiba Inu, and six months from now, it shoots up, a year from now, two years from now, it shoots up and you make a ton of money, who was really right? But it, again, it does not mean that if you made a lot of money that you ended up being exactly. right either. Yeah. It's where do you draw that line? And it's yeah. funny because I don't know my role in all of this meme economy and this conversation because I could sit here and make this video and I could make a technical video explaining to you how Shiba Inu works and I'm sure there's a hundred videos on YouTube by now that explain yeah. the technicals of it. I'm just here to approach it from a philosophical perspective of how do you want to invest? What kind of an investor do you want to be? Facts. What I found, and I don't want to like talk down on anyone, is the more of a speculative investment you get into, and again, I don't want to put myself on a pedestal because I am like the worst example of that because I bought a $200,000 Pokemon collection. <laughs> he did. <laughs> How much more speculative you know, do I want to be? Right. I bought into Omi. 
like a ridiculous amount of money. Those are all my speculative investments, which I've done. So I've played my part in that mm -hmm. role. But I also know that I've already done the thing I needed to do. I've already invested in real estate and stocks mm -hmm. and dividends and all this stuff that is, I guess, the more mature, adulty version of investing, right? Mm -hmm. I've done that. So I guess if you want to break the rules, you have to learn what they are. And once you do, then you break those rules. Right. And so I've broken my rules. You know, I went outside of the boundary mm -hmm. of what was safe. But what I found is the deeper you go into this world of alternate investing, the less, less sophisticated you, yes. that investor is. The less you know. The less you kind of generally know. You just yeah. kind of, it's like your moonshot. You're like, ooh, yeah. please yeah. just bing, yeah. <laughs> let me get rich here. Yeah. And that's okay because that's what you did. The issue is though, a lot of times people don't have a lot of money. The people that are making these moonshots, the people that are taking these risks, like me, I, I come from nothing. I. I didn't, I wasn't born rich, right? This was a moonshot because I wanted to get out of my situation so badly. And people are looking at different coins and different opportunities the same exact way, right? Right. So what? who are you to tell them exactly. don't do it? I can't make a video on YouTube saying, oh, you shouldn't do this. And neither can you You're because right. that is exactly what you did. And it paid off for you. You're right. And with all respect, you didn't have that much money either, yeah. but it paid off. And so who am I to sit here and preach in front of the camera to whoever's watching this, don't do this. All I can do is just tell people, hey, there's this thing, yeah. this is what people are doing, here's how they're making money, I'm not for or against it, but this is what you should know about it, and here's what I have. And just provide the most transparency I can as far as what I own and how I make my money and yeah. what I'm investing into, and the rest you decide for yourself. But my belief is that the people who vote with their money is what you should pay attention to. True. It's not what people say. Mm -hmm. It's not the videos we mm -hmm. make. Because I might make a video about some crazy investment. It doesn't mean I'm pumping it. Yeah. I'm just covering it because I gotta pay my bills too. So I gotta talk about stuff sometimes too. But what you really should pay attention to is how people vote, which is with their money. That's what I want to get across in any video that I do about these alternative investments. And when I talk about Dogecoin, you see exactly my portfolio. I'm not making this up. I'm not pumping anything. I talk with my money. Like, this is where all my money is invested in, and this is why I talk about this. What Andre is saying is when he presents something, he's trying to give you the least amount of risk as possible that he sees, right? So whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's Ethereum, these what we call like to call blue chip, you know, cryptos, he's not saying that because he doesn't want you to get this moonshot, right? Like what you're trying to do is these things have presented less risk over the years. And so these are what we like to call safer bets, sure. right? But it doesn't mean that you're wrong in what you're trying to do. Well, it's only wrong if you invest most of your resources and most of your money into a moonshot. And it goes back to asking, which kind of an investor do you want to be? True. Do you want to be a gambler and somebody who just YOLOs their money at their moonshot? <laughs> which is fine. Me. That's fine. <laughs> Or do you want to do something a little bit more sensible, yeah. which is a crazy world we live in that I could say Bitcoin and Ethereum are more sensible. sensible like, right. what world are we living in? This is not very sensible either. But if I have one great idea for how I'm going to grow my money, chances are that first best idea is better than my second best idea. Right. And it's only so far down the ladder do you go before you realize, maybe my 10th best decision isn't as good as my first. And right. I guess I'm the kind of person who's very safe and I'll say, listen, here are my top three or five. Here's what they are. But if you want to be the guy that just does the 10th, that's fine too. But just know that the distinction between the two, what is gambling and what is investing. Right. And you can look at his portfolio. Where yeah, does he all, have his money? It's all out in the open. Where does he invest? Most of it is real estate in this house that I bought in February. Dividend it's stocks. It's a nice house. It's a nice house. Oh, thank you. Thank it's you. Very this nice. is my basement. It's uh, beautiful. Thank nice. you. <laughs> so real estate, dividend stocks, Bitcoin and Ethereum, and that's pretty much it. Maybe I'll try Only the homie, <laughs> the homie, bro. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay. And some Pokemon. And yeah, but again, they're a huge part of my investment portfolio. Yes. Omi and Pokemon cards is over like 
$400,000, $300,000, which is a lot of money. But again, in relation to everything else I have, yeah. it's not that much. It's like 10% of my net worth. There you go. So keep all that in mind when you invest into whatever it is and mm -hmm. go forth, my minions, and make your money. There you go. Hope you guys learned something. <laughs> Smash the like button for the algorithm. Subscribe, and I hope you got something out of it. Peace and, out. And uh, your BlockFi. I'm gonna do that later. Okay. <laughs> this is a one take wonder. This is our first take. That was that was so good. You're good. <laughs> We're why, good. Why are you so good? How are we so good? We're equally good. <laughs> I don't even have to wear the hat. I love it. <laughs> Bro, that was great. great Incredible. Dude.